Well, how are you doing? <clears throat> okay. I don't like doing response videos, uh, but this is one I feel I have to do. Um, this is to Prototad. Uh, Prototad, here he is down here. He made this video um, addressing me, right? Because I left some comments on his video <clears throat> uh, that he made a video he made recently or some while back <clears throat> about circles of equal altitude on a globe, right? On the surface of a globe. Um, there were certain things he didn't address, so I'll address them one particular thing that he didn't address. Um, there's two things in particular, but there's one of the main thing I'll address in this. So I just have to go through his video. Um, I'll have to read out some parts of what he's, some of his uh, citations um, <clears throat> and uh, address some parts of his video. I'll get through it as fast as possible and I'll have to play one part of his video. So I'm just going to restart. Okay. So I won't play his video. I'm just going to go through um, through it like this and only play one bit. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so these are not nego negotiable. Elevation angle measurements end the debate since it can never be achieved from a curved baseline. Tent adds, he needs to debunk our sighted sources. Celestial navigation is what he is against, not our reading in context of these sources. What he's referring to there is tent man um, uh, addressing, I think it was Divergent Droid, who was having a thing with Prototad on um, on the Science versus Pseudoscience um, uh, Discord server. So Prototad got kicked off the server uh, because he wasn't, something happened with him in Divergent Droid, he couldn't support his claim, something he claimed or something, I don't know, I can't remember, I'm not going to lay something on him if I'm not 100% sure, but something happened and Divergent droid kicked them off or whatever. <clears throat> now, uh, this is what he's talking about. He's talking about this is referring to Tent Man telling Divergent droid this, as far as I remember, as far as I know. Doesn't matter if I'm wrong about it, doesn't matter. Okay. Angle of elevation. This is something that uh, Tent Man uh, shared with uh, uh, Divergent droid or maybe Proto uh, directly. The upwards angle from the horizontal to a line of sight from the observer to the to some point of interest. So there's an angle of elevation, and if the angle goes downwards, it is called an angle of depression. So here is an angle of depression. But the oil happened from a horizontal line. But this is something proto added in. Note the Earth's surface is not a line in this angle, right? That's incorrect, right? When it comes to celestial navigation elevation angles with the marine sextant. The earth surface is exactly what's used. The surface of sea level is exactly what's used. That's the horizontal. But we'll get to that in a while. <coughs> I'm just going to move on. He has some other stuff there that's, that's important. This is him uh, supposedly in here, uh, taking a, a sextant reason, reading at sea. Right? Here is the horizon out beyond him there. Uh, what he'll be correcting down to, sea level. Right, The very thing he's denying he's going to be correcting down to from his boat. You know, I don't know what's going on there. Well, we'll get to that in a while. Here he is again. Um, th this is him doing something similar again. There's water out from him there, and he's going to be he's taking a sextant sight and it's going to correct down to the water line. That's what he's going to do from his eye down to the water line. But anyway, here he is putting a circle, what he's calling a circle of equal attitude onto the so onto a globe. And this is not what's done, right? Um this is something that's done afterwards, but this is not the initial, right? Um, and this is a circumference, right? It's not a circle of equal altitude because you can't take an angle off of that. The, this is a curved, this is like a dome. So it doesn't matter if each, from each point here, if you had an angle line, it would go to, at each point in that circle, it would go to a star straight above the GP point, which would be the GP point here if it were going into the globe world. But the problem is, is that to get the angle line to the celestial body, you can't have this curved surface. So he's going to try and make people believe that within this video that this is all happening on a curved surface. But what he's not telling you, right, is that what his citations are talking about is not the surface. The surface uh, is not the surface of the globe, as in these circles are not being placed on the circle of surface surface on the, of the globe initially they're initially played play, uh, sorry, placed 
onto the horizontal plane of the earth and not any spherical nonsense. That doesn't happen. But I'll go through it and I'll show you what I mean. Because <clears throat> what he's trying to make it out as if the circles are drawn directly onto a globe. No, they're not. That's not where them circles come from. How they end up on that globe is not from someone doing what he does there. That's not what happens. Um, so <clears throat> this is me uh, replying to someone on his video. His method, question mark, says to me, you should think about that, question mark. For example, remember when he measured degrees off of the globe equator? That would require R, right? He's using a globe without having any R measurement. So where is his R measurement for the globe he's going to be using? Right? Totally valid point that no one on our opposition side seems to want to address. You don't have an R measurement. There's no measurement of R. There's no geometric measurements of curvature ever in history. So you, where are you going to with this globe? You have nothing. There is no real world measurements of the globe. It's total rubbish. It's all back, mathematical back engineering from real world flat plane measurements. That's what it is. It's planar geometry, um, which is just geometry that's, that's uh, back engineered mathematically to fit inside the center of a globe. That's all that goes on with the... And it's funny he put this up because <clears throat> this is where... To remember the word center, because that's going to be very important. Right, the center of the globe. Remember that, because that's going to be very important in this reply. <clears throat> so anyway, that would require all. Yeah, if you're going to be talking about a globe, you, first of all, you'll need all. Well, he went and made three circles of equal altitude afterwards that not only had unmeasured radii, right? Because the what he's what he's showing there, um, here. What's the radius? Who measured the radius for this for this claimed circle? What's the radius? Who measured the radius? No one measured that radius for that circle, for that circumference, right? The radius for that is 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 a, now at the moment a chord line, right, or, or a semi chord through the through the sphere here. No one measured that though. That's only a consequence of them back in mathematical mathematically back engineering these circles onto a globe. That's all it is. But no, there's no measured radii for this circle or radius for this circle or radii for the other circles. That's not there, right? So, <clears throat> so that not only had unmeasured radii, but outside of your equator, those degrees won't equal 69 square foot miles. And those circles will n were not circles as they were not 2D. Yeah, it's not 2D. It's a dome you're creating. It's a circumference of a dome. You should have used the zenith distances as radii and made three actual circles. Yeah, that's what he should have done. That's what you're supposed to do, right? But that's what his that's that's what they actually do. But they then back calculators to fit the globe. That's what they do, right? <clears throat> so this is the problem outside of uh, outside of um, the, let's say uh, his equator, right? Um, and any great circle, right, right, um, the equator on the globe and any great circle, 69.04 statute miles will not fit, right, you can't, you can't back calculate them onto it, whereas in reality, from any position on earth, any position, in any direction, at any time, you can always, right, convert 16 nautical to 69.04 statute miles in the horizontal at all times but the globe remember are restricted to what they're claiming are great circle routes right so that restriction means that they can't have that measurement in any direction but in reality it's a horizontal measurement from any place on earth right in any direction at any time and it's always it always fits you always have 16 article miles that will always become 69.08 or 0.04 statute miles. That always, always happens. But the, on their globe, that can't happen. It can only happen in certain directions and with at certain measurements, which are all north south. Most of them are just all north south. Because the, the equator is not a great circle route. Nobody is flying around the equator. Nobody's doing that. It's just a circle. There is no evidence that great what they claim to be great circle routes are circles. 
there was no evidence of that. I cannot get anyone to give me any evidence to create circle roots or circles. Nobody can provide me any evidence of that. Because they'd first have to come up with a radius, wouldn't they? A radius measurement. That'd be the first thing they'd have to come up with. And I know where their radius measurement came from. It came from flat earth elevation angles to Polaris, as my videos show. I did all a 40 minute video going through all parts of it from A through to Z, showed exactly where their radius came from. It's all back calculated. So 69.04 statute miles per degree works in every direction in the horizontal, regardless of where you are on earth at all times, right? Whereas for them, it only works with great circles. That's the only place it works for them. Any direction that's not a great circle, they can't use it. But in reality, you can, right? We'll move on. <clears throat> Here is him saying he got a fix, blah, blah, blah. Right, he didn't get a fix, right? Well, he, well, he did. I won't say he did. He did get a fix, but that fix didn't start there. That started on a horizontal plane, right? And it was back calculated from the center of his globe to that, right? That's where it comes from, not what he's trying to show here, right? Because he, he, what he had in his original video is he had, as well as that, a conversion, right? He has a little piece of paper with conversions on it. There's a way of converting, right? The uh, 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 conversions for the latitudes and that. And that's what he was using because he was converting uh, uh, angles right along the equator um, to parts above uh, and below it. Right? That's basically what he was at. But it can be done mathematically, but you can't do it in reality. Mathematically, you can do it, but you can't do it in reality. So yeah, that's something from page. So, like that. so here is right, a, a circle. A circle is a plane figure, a plane figure, right? Contained by one line, which is called the circumference. And is, is such that all straight lines drawn from a center point, a certain point within the figure, the circumference are equal to one another. That's a radius, right? Um, and this point is called the center of the circle, right? The diameter of a circle is a straight line drawn through the center and to, terminated both ways by the circumference. Grand. Uh, <coughs> But that's just the basics of a circle, right? Then it goes on to show this, right? A great circle through points A and B, blah, blah, blah. So back to the great circle thing. But every, as I said, there is no evidence that great circle roots are circles. Because the first thing you'd have to come up with to prove that a great circle is a circle would be a radius measurement. They're not coming up with any radius measurements. They can't, nobody, whether it be pilots, supposed navigator, nobody can prove that great circle roots are circles. Because... Even a navigator, uh, I listened to a clip from a navigator on a ship, big ship, not some small ship, now a big one, you know, uh, one of these big commercial ships or whatever. And the navigator said, yeah, on the map you draw, you can draw on the Mercator map and that you can draw uh, a curved line. But in reality, it's a straight line because that's all great circle routes are, straight lines. That's what they are. In reality, they're just a straight line. You can take any great circle route, straighten it out, and it doesn't change the route, it doesn't change the distance. It's exactly the same. Because what they did is they just took two corresponding lo longitude lines that were horizontal, that were straight horizontal lines, and they made them meet at each end to create their globe. That's why their globe can't have a radius any bigger or smaller than 3959 miles. It can't change from that. And the reason is, is that it has to match, right? The length of the longitude lines. They can't change the size because it makes it'll make the longitude line smaller uh, or bigger, right? And none of that will work because none of the celestial observations will work then for them. They can't back it, calculate all the latitudes from Polaris and all that. They can't do all that. And even at that, they can't do it anyway because they have a refracted horizon, so they can't do any of these things with the horizon. Not only is their horizon below the sea level underneath their boat, but it's also refracted. So it's never constant. It's always going up and down. So nothing is consistent. It's all nonsense. None of it works. And you certainly can't get your latitude with it. How are you going to get your latitude with a refracted horizon? You know, you can't do that. <clears throat> you can't get 90 with a refracted horizon or a globe, globe geometric horizon anyway. It's not possible. So none of it works. But anyway, <clears throat> I'll go through that later. Let's move on a bit. This is some stuff that's not very consequential. Okay. <clears throat> this is from... Um, uh, what's his name? Let's just go back here a second. So, from um, what's the man's name again? Uh, he had something in there a minute ago about Bodic, but this is from uh, Sumner. Sumner. Sorry, I couldn't remember the man's name. And Sumner is is said to be 
the person who came up with the idea of circles of equal latitude. Now I don't think he's the man who came up with that originally. <clears throat> but he may be, it doesn't really matter, right? Right, I'm going to read out a few things here, right? Uh, the pole of any circle of a sphere is a point on the surface of the sphere, from which every point in the circumference of the circle is equally distant. Thus, every circle of the sphere has two poles, and a straight line joining them is the diameter of the sphere, right? He's just talking about a cross section through the sphere. One half of the spherical surface of the Earth, but well, he has to highlight, highlight that, because Sumner said the Earth had a spherical surface. I don't care what Sumner believed, right? Sumner was wrong, like the rest of you. You're all wrong, right? Sumner could believe what he wanted and mathematically back calculate the nonsense all day long. When Sumner was doing the actual measurements, he was using a horizontal plane. So I don't care what he called the surface of the earth. It means nothing to me who begs the question or who who can't leave go of a belief. I don't care. That means nothing to me. So that's not proof. Some of those beliefs, beliefs are not proof, geometric proof of anything, Proto. <laughs> it's nonsense. Right, being illuminated by the sun at a given instant, while uh, instance, while at the same time the opposite portion is in the shade. That line, which is the boundary between the illuminated and dark hemispheres, is called the geo geographers, geographers, geo sorry, geo geographers, sorry, this, uh, the circle of illumination. Right, who cares what they call it? Right, it's not. It's on a globe that doesn't exist, so they can make up any nonsense they want about it. This doesn't happen. Right. There is no such thing as what they were saying here, right? You would need a globe for that. That doesn't exist. What's the best part about all this, and you'll see is down here at the bottom, is the corrections being made by the usual tables for parallax, semi-diameter, semi-diameter, refraction, and the spheroidal figure of the earth, right? Right? Right. Now, some of them, yeah, grand, yeah, some of the other uh, corrections, yeah, fair enough. Right, I understand, but the spher spheroidal figure of the earth. Hmm, I wonder what correction that would be. Would it have anything to do with the center, I wonder? Hmm, it might do. But the best one is, and if the eye be elevated for dip also, that's elevated above, this is with a marine sextant, elevated above the waterline, right? Remember that. That's the most important part of all this nonsense is written up here. Uh, move on, right? Make sure... Uh, Right. Yeah. Uh, to, to facilitate the understanding of the theory of this method, a reference to the following common definitions relative to spherical bodies may be necessary. Right, A sphere is a uniformly, uniformly round body, uh, every point on the surface of which is equally distant from a center point, or sorry, a certain point within the body called the center. Right, The center, right? he's telling you, someone is telling you what he's doing. He's going to be using the center. That's what he's going to be doing. But where is he going to get the information to place it in the center? That's the important part. If any plane or flat surfaces pass through the sphere, the intersection of the surface of the sphere by the plane is the circumference of a circle, right? Yeah. Then he talks about a great circle here and a small circle, right? <clears throat> it doesn't matter to me. I know what great circles are claimed to be. I know what small circles are, right? Or a small circle, but I know what those things are. I'll read it out in a minute. Uh, I think it's highlighted up here. Um, there we go. Right. Well, a great circle is, of a sphere is one of those plane passes through the center of, of one whose plane passes through the center of the sphere and so divides the sphere into two equal parts called hemispheres. Right, begging the question. This is some not begging the question. A small circle of a sphere is one whose plane does not pass through the center of the sphere and consequently divides the sphere into two unequal, unequal parts. What he's talking about there is the smaller circles of latitude, right? Not right, not the not the uh, equator, smaller circles of latitude. The pole of any circle of a sphere is a point on the surface of the sphere from which every point in the circumference of the circle is equally distant. Thus, every circle of the sphere has two poles and a straight line joining them is the diameter of the sphere. Yeah, that's the cross section through the sphere, right? It's all talking about the center, right? None of this is at the surface. This is at the center. So prototype drawing things on the surface is a lot of nonsense because none of this is about the, sur the surface. The surface that, be de that they deal with is horizontal. 
that's what they deal with. One half of the spherical surface of the earth being illuminated by the sun, and that's back to that nonsense again. Yeah, we've seen that before. So we move on. So it is a great circle and its plane passes through the center of the earth, dividing it into two equal parts, in the same manner as the equator is a great circle of the earth, <laughs> right? Uh, and divides it into the northern and the southern hemispheres. But these are also divided by small circles of the sphere parallel to the equator, which are called parallels of latitude. Yeah, right, the circles of latitude to the equator right, that they place on the globe, which, you know, you can just take a slice or whatever, and the, this, your slices will be smaller the closer to the north or south pole you go on the globe, right? Uh, but these are also divided by small circles of the sphere parallel to the equator, which are called parallels of latitude. And by their means, the latitude is reckoned, right? Right. Now remember, latitude comes from Polaris, in particular, flat plane elevation angles to Polaris. You can't get your latitude with the sea horizon and Polaris on a globe, because the sea horizon is a refracted position that constantly not just moves away from you and closer to you like it does in reality but it do, on the globe it does something else it goes up and down up and down in elevation in relation to the water on your boat so you'll never get your correct latitude using the sea horizon on the globe there are refracted sea horizon on the globe it will never happen can't be done there's none of this can happen you can't get your 90 right there is no 90 that's possible um on the globe so all this means now nothing. Sumner, none of this means anything to me. You don't mean anything to me. <laughs> right? None of this means anything to me. Right? Because you're talking nonsense that doesn't happen and can't can't be done. Right? You can mathematically back calculate this nonsense all you want. In reality, you must use a horizontal plane. Um at at the sea horizon uh, as a horizontal plane, right? From one of each other to the horizon and beyond. To the GP to get your to get your latitude with Polaris, so it's total nonsense. And the true and to prove this, right? And by their means, the latitude is reckoned. All places situated on the equator having their latitude equal to zero, hmm, zero at the equator, and proceeding towards the poles, the latitude of places on these small circles increases regularly until arriving at them, it becomes equal to ninety. So zero to ninety, that would be a right angle. That would be a right angle. So no, they don't exist on the surface of globes. You can't have a right angle, uh, a right angle on the surface of a globe. And all the uh, all the power points in between would be that would be all the points, all the all the points in between that you would be measuring. They'd be all right angle triangles. You no, know, so that's what you're dealing with there. <clears throat> so no, none of that happens on the surface of a sphere. Here he is begging a question, hoping that this somehow proves that the Earth is a sphere because he put this nonsense. This nonsense diagram up. This doesn't prove anything. This is total nonsense. Yeah, anyone can make a diagram. It doesn't mean anything <coughs> in reality, which I'm going to show in a while. None of this works. So move on next. Right. <coughs> right. To remedy this difficulty and render a single altitude of the sun taken at any angle from the meridian, from the meridian or from the east and west points available, when the latitude and apparent point at the uh, at the ship are from accidental causes on sound, the time of observation by chronometer, blah, blah, blah. The method of projection affords a substitute for parallel of latitude or a meridian of long longitude, namely a line diagonal to either of the, these, and which is called a parallel of equal altitude, which when projected on Mercator's chart according to the rules given, shows a ship to be on such projected line, right? So a parallel of equal altitude, a parallel, parallel to what? What's a parallel to? Right. What what he's talking about there now is is uh, <clears throat> uh, a a parallel to parallel to what? Because the only things that like you can call even with the, even on the globe you can call the circles of latitude parallels because they're parallel to each other. They're all parallel planes. That's the point. So all they're all horizontal planes. That's that's what they're meant to be or how they're described. They're all planes parallel to each other. What's this parallel of equal altitude? Because he's trying to make a circle of equal altitude out of this. But what's it What's it parallel to? Or why would it be called a parallel? It has to be parallel to something. I know what it's parallel to. It's parallel to the equatorial plane. Uh, see, he thinks people are stupid. 
I know exactly the kind of nonsense that Sumner is talking about and the kind of nonsense that, that Proto didn't mention is that all this stuff, all this stuff is all measured on the horizontal plane of Earth and then those angles are brought to the center of a globe to mathematically make up a load of nonsense to uh, allow a load of people to keep believing a load of nonsense that isn't real. And that's what that's about, right? So all this parallel of equal altitude, what this is, what Proto was drawing on the surface of his, his globe there earlier, what that is, is the plane of that circumference is, is parallel to the equatorial plane. Right, um, that's below. It's come, and where did the angle come from originally? Well, it didn't come from the center of the globe. It started off as an actual measurement in the, in the real world on a horizontal plane. That's where it started off, and it was then projected down to the equatorial plane. So it's completely not a nonsense what he's going on with here. <clears throat> There's no even need to to keep on uh, reading this because I know what it's about. Right. He continues on. I'm going to see if I can just play this little bit here a second. Right. Try and play it. The position of the celestial pole. All right, one second. Circles of equal altitude. He noted that just as latitude mm -hmm. equal altitude. He noted that just using the name parallels of equal altitude for what we now call circles of equal altitude. We the parallels of equal altitude are on a globe, circles of equal altitude are on a horizontal plane, right? So he's trying to trying to force it in there, trying to call by all this thing in there. Whereas parallels of equal altitude are parallel to what? To the equatorial plane. Where does the angle come from at the equatorial plane? Where did they get the angle from? From a measurement on a horizontal plane. That's where they got the, the angle from. He noted that just as latitude lines encircle the ground position of the celestial pole at ever increasing distances, with every position on a given latitude providing the same sextant altitude angle for the northern pole star, you could create similar circles around the ground positions of other celestial bodies, with the distance from that GP following the same 60 nautical mile per degree rule. The major difference being that these circles were cocked at an angle to the latitude circles. See, what, is, what really should be happening here is should be a line through here that this, that the circumference, the plane through that circumference of this circle should be parallel to. That's what it isn't in this particular diagram. There should be a line coming horizontally like that. So that's parallel to that because they're always bringing it from the surface to the center of the globe. This angle, see there, the angle is coming from the center. Right? Why is it coming from the center? Because it was originally measured on the surface. So they take it from the surface, bring it to the center, then project it back out onto the onto their, their curved surface. That's what they do, right? Um, <clears throat> I just wanted Porter, Porter to, to speak there. Um, and we move on, right? On a given small circle called a parallel of equal altitude, have the same altitude of the sun and blah, blah, blah. It's just the same nonsense. It's like, it's like trying to crowbar in this thing that has to start on a horizontal plane to begin with. And I'm going to show that in a minute, right? This is all, like, I'm just showing it so people can look at it and read it whenever they want. I don't care. Right? It, it doesn't prove anything. It's all back, it's all belief and begging the question by some law. And back, 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 mathematical back engineering. Right? <clears throat> this is one of the, he, this is one of the comments I made to him a few weeks ago. No proto, your CEA or your circles of equal attitude are not circles of equal attitude. Use the equator as a benchmark for degrees, but that is a curved distance that you are trying to turn into a radius. But radio your straight line, uh, our uh, radio your straight line photo. So the circle you draw will be too small as your radio will be too small, making the whole lot farce. I could have picked 10 other things out of the video, but I didn't want to be too critical. As I was talking about a video he made some while back about circles of equal latitude on a globe. But radio our straight line. Yeah, that's right. They are proto. They can't be not straight. That's a radio. Um, each parallel of equal altitude will be observed. It, uh, it will be observed. Is described around the pole of illumination as a center, at a distance measured on the arc of a great circle. Right. This is what they're talking about. The arc of a great circle. That measurement there is the arc scale. Right. 
um, this, uh, it's just what that actually is talking about there is uh, the hijacking of the celestial dome model. That's what that is. That's all this is the hijacking of the celestial dome model. They just take the celestial dome and place a globe in the center of it. Um, and that's all they do, to, or a hemisphere in the center of it. That's all they do. It's complete load of rubbish. Right? All these things happen on the horizontal plane. The horizontal plane of the celestial dome model is is the real world, right? And the dome model part is just a way of uh, uh, a way of describing and uh, um, showing um, uh, kind of um, what's the best way to describe it? A way of trying to show perspective in the uh, in the orthographic view. That's what it is. That's what the celestial dome model is. It's just a protractor. But it doesn't have to be a circle, right? It can be a square. It can be a right, it can be a triangle. It doesn't have to be a circle. Right? Protractors can be so I have a protractor there and it's not a circle. It's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a dome. It's a, a right angle triangle. And you'll also get a square that does the same thing. So it like all they did was take the uh, take the uh, circle, the arc and uh, hijack it. They just hijack the circle. If you look at their globe, there's exactly, like if you look at what what their globe is, it's just a hijacking of a circle. If you go into the details, the maths, they just hijack the circle, that's all they did. So it's all, all rubbish. Anyway, measure on the arc of a great circle passing through this pole, which is equal to the complement of the sun's altitude. Blah, blah, blah. Right, what he's talking about there is the, the zenith distance is being taken from the surface and brought down uh, to the center of the globe and then they measure along the surface what would be the surface above that the arc distance along the surface above that and that's what they do <coughs> it's total of rubbish but here we are right then he goes on to show this one second now right then he shows this right right zenith right then he shows this circle of equal attitude see the way it's all coming from the center what he's not showing is there should be another horizontal line through here right there should be a horizontal line through here because it's all coming from the center but it's he's not it's not obvious straight away what's happening but all right so maybe proto has a point so if someone who's naive might think right because they don't know what they're they don't they don't realize that proto is a total believer he really believes in the globe and that's why he's coming up with this nonsense and then here, you have the pole of illumination, right, which is the zenith from the GP, right, of the star. So you have, this is the GP point of the observer, and there is zenith. Here is supposed to be another zenith that's diverging from that zenith. Right? Like, no way, how is that possible? Two divergent zeniths, totally impossible, as I showed in videos a few was a few, as I showed a few videos back, and as I showed in the, in the past. But here we have 21,000, or sorry, 2,100 nautical miles between here and here. But all they did was, Right, measure along the arc of a protractor because you cut this in half and you just have a protractor that's all they're doing it's just mathematical back engineering it doesn't mean anything and the proof it doesn't mean anything is this right he had to put this in because he knew that i knew where these diagrams were so where did this horizontal come from where did that come from because that is the very thing that you would need to make an altitude angle and a co-altitude angle off of that, which would be a zenith angle. So that's the, where did you get the horizontal from? Because he's not using the surface of the globe. This is an exact, this here now, right? All that stuff that Sumner and anyone else wants to say in their books means nothing. Because this here is a concession that they cannot use the surface of their globe to do this stuff. It can't be used. They can't use their globe to do this, and that's the that's the issue. They need that horizontal to create that that needs to be uh, from the water underneath the boat in a direct hor horizontal line with the with the uh, horizon, and then through the horizon in a direct horizontal to the GP point of the celestial body. Where do they get that from? Where do you get your horizontal? Because that was what was they needed. Because they need the right angle, the ninety degrees, to be able to make that angle here. And get those calculations and then move it down to the center of their globe. Where do you go, get that from? I tell you what they got that from. They got that from reality. 
this is an absolute admission from Portal that he, he or anyone else cannot do this process using the surface of their globe. They can't do it. They must do all their measurements using a horizontal surface of reality and then move them down. So he just gave the game away there. <clears throat> Each parallel of equal altitude, it will be observed, is described around the pole of illumination as a, as a centre at the distance measured on the arc of a great circle. As I just showed, all they're doing is they're doing all the measurements in reality on a horizontal plane and then they're moving them down to the center and then they're right to the center of their, their globe uh, mathematically and then they're they're just taking an arc of a great circle great circle what's that what is a great circle it's two corresponding longitude lines where do they come from horizontal measurements that's where they came from horizontal measurements these measurements here that's where those longitude lines came from these exact measurements here to polaris that's where they came from. Right, so it's all hijacking. All the globe is is one big hijack. They just hijack everything. They're so desperate, they have to hijack things. And they just hijack absolutely everything they can. Anything that's a real world effect or anything that they think they can hijack and make it, make it part of our globe, they do. But in reality, none of it happens. The globe is not real. It can't be. It can't be because we need this, right? And massive hundreds and thousands of miles of horizontal right measured in reality for you to even start mathematically creating a globe it doesn't exist and it never did and never will right i'm going to move on right here he is right 2700 right that's supposed to be your zenith distance it's an arc <laughs> here right that's supposed to be a zenith distance it's supposed to be a horizontal that's the whole point. You know, it's like, it's, and I show in a while, it's total nonsense. Right? right? Oh, yeah, things that don't agree with me. Yeah, as if I care about all these people. Uh, if I care, I don't care about any of these people and any nonsense they want to claim about the globe. Any of these people, whether it be uh, Harold Jacoby or whoever, uh, Sumner or anyone, I don't care. Nobody cares what they have to say. Right? I only care about the process, and the process requires a horizontal plane. That's all that matters to me. I don't care about what they say, how good they can back calculate their nonsense uh, to make it into a globe. It means nothing to me. And I'll tell if I ever get a chance to tell any of these people these, this stuff in, in heaven, I'll tell them all about it. I'll tell them you're full of crap in the story, right? It's not a globe, and you know it. <laughs> I'll tell Harold Jacoby that he's completely full of it. And I tell Thomas H. Sumner, he's completely full of it. And anyone else here that wants to hear about it, I know Andy Shell actually lives, he's actually alive, but he's full of it as well. You're all full of it. Right? None of you, none of you right, can disprove that you need to use a flat horizontal plane that's ridiculously big in size in reality to, to back calculate your nonsense. You can't do it because you can't escape reality can't be escaped you know begging the question won't help you escape it so let's move on all right here we are again with these curved <laughs> curved zenith uh distance here we are oh, this is some mactoon's challenge nonsense nobody cares mactoon so <clears throat> actually one second let's go back a second right just so you know right just so i'm not claiming of passing over it I'm not sure if this is the same one as McTune had out a while ago for the ten thousand dollar challenge or something. Like that. As soon as I asked McTune, I said, "Why don't you go and prove your globe with this challenge, McTune?" That's all I asked him, very simply in a comment. What happened? He just disappeared and shut up about it. Suddenly, he just shut the heck up about it. Why did he shut up about it? Because he knew that he'd have to go through, and I said it to him, he'd have to go through all the steps. Just show us all the steps and prove our globe. No. He just disappeared. Him and his little challenge disappeared. I held it back for a while, leading them off to go around acting the big man. And just asked them, well, if, if it proves the globe, then, you know, if it's all done on the globe, just go off and use your challenge to prove the globe. And what did he do? He just showed up and went away with his nonsense challenge. Because he knew the starting point of all that would be angles. See them? From a 90 degrees. See them? Using the, the, the sea level. Of earth, right? That's what that would be. 
he would lose immediately. Right? But it doesn't matter. Here we are. <laughs> it's nonsense again. No, Proto, it all happens at the center of your globe. After, right, the center of your globe. After you've been using the horizontal reality. That doesn't happen, Proto. You're talking nonsense. This is funny. This is Proto claiming to use, draw two circles of equal altitude, right, um, on a flat AE map of some kind, right? That's what he said. Now, this doesn't look like a circle. This looks more like an ellipse, right? So, not right. And then he says, look, it's 450 nautical miles out. Well, why didn't you draw a third one then, Proto? I mean, why, this is all he just did. He just showed us this photograph and made a claim about it and ran off. It's like, well, show us the process you used, Proto. Where did you, like, what's the, how did you get the radius measurement for, they say, from Vega to the circumference here? Where did you get the radius measurement for that? How did you come up with a radius measurement? I know how you come up with it. I'm going to show how you come up, how you can, how you do really come up with it. I'm going to show Proto showing us that. But I'd like to know that. So why don't you do this again, Proto, and go through the, the full, the full uh, process from A to Z. Show us how you got these, how you got the radius for these circles. You know, maybe do three ones. Show us the whole thing. You know, and I don't know. You're using a, a Gleason's map or something like that. Right, that's, I don't know what what he's trying to, you know. That's that's a globe map. Uh, you know, it needs that needs longitudinal reassignment for everything, at least everything south of the equator. But anyway, he's saying it's all wrong here. But where's your third circle? Do you know what I mean? If you know, we, you didn't show us how it's four hundred and fifty nautical miles long. You didn't show us any of these. This look at the intersection point here. That is where our tube more intersection. He's saying it's four hundred fifty nautical miles wrong. Is it? How is it? You didn't show us anything. You just showed us this, made a claim, and ran away. That's not. That's not exactly. That's not exactly tour, is it? You know. So uh, I have a claim to make, and I'm going to run away. That's all you did. So this means nothing to me. This means absolutely nothing because uh, I don't even know how you got the radius. You know, because you, according to Proto. You don't measure a radius at all. You measure a curved distance. So how how'd you come up with the radius proto? But anyway, this is the nonsense proto goes on with. Maybe he'll come back and show us, you know what I mean? Using a globe map, you know. You know, how, how it doesn't work. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's not working on your globe then. This is him talking about how he's going to um, be talking about uh, uh, site soap reduction. Uh, 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 tables and how it's all based on the globe or it needs a globe or some rubbish like no so reduction is is the um it's defining what soil reduction is is defining angles so it it makes your angle your angle your 90 degrees that you'll be using your angles using 90 degrees it makes them more precise that's what soil reduction does so we have precision it's about precision that's what soil reduction is about now this has gone on a good bit. I'm just going to go to here. And I'm going to have to show you a few things before we finish. It's going to be a very long video. What have we learned today? This is a proto. No burn the flat earth debate panel has ever done any celestial navigation. No, that's incorrect. <laughs> right? yeah, that's just a basis of origin, but uh, knowing, right? To face with an actual demonstration of the process, they mostly ran from it. What demonstration? You didn't, there was no demonstration of the process. You know, uh, you just start drawing cir circumferences onto a globe. That's not a demonstration of the process. You know, that's you didn't go through all the steps, the initial steps. Our argument is the elevation angles and uh, how the circles of equal altitude are created in reality. Now, like, we don't care what you do with your globes after that. You can do what you want after that. You know, you can take all the angles from the center of your globe and make up all the nonsense you want. You want. We don't care about all that. Start at the start. Go through all the steps from the start. Stop running, running from the start. The elevation angles, because that's what you're running from. He just showed himself on a boat or at a beach with a sextant. That's all he showed. You know, so what? Go, show us what you did. Show us your, show, go through all the process. Show us the angles. Draw them out. Show us the height, the height of void dip correction. Show us all those things, Proto. Didn't show us any of them. So we didn't run from anything. You just didn't present anything that any of us give a damn about. <laughs> we present something that someone's going to care about, Proto. And then you won't have the impression people are running from you. 
Brian, three, Brian's knowledge had complained that my circles of equal attitude were not drawn on a flat surface. Yeah, they weren't. But, uh, Captain, but Captain Sumner described circles of equal attitude as being on the surface of a globe-shaped earth. No, Captain Sumner described creating mockness, right, and falsehoods from the centre of a globe, right, after being able to, after initially having to measure that stuff on the horizontal plane of the earth, and then bring it to the centre of that globe. So that's what Captain Sumner did, because Captain Sumner is a complete load of bullshit. <laughs> That's why. I don't care what he did. But as far as I'm concerned, he's a bullshitter. Because he is. <laughs> because that's Captain Sumner. So once again, the authoritative sources disagree with you. We never said any of them agreed with us. We said, none of us said that. Tent man, not tent man, not me, not QE, not Nathan, not anyone. None of us said that the authoritative sources ag agree with us. None of us said that. We've all said from the start... A, a, a tent man was specific about it. That every single part of all the celestial navigation books, not the Nautical Almanac, not that, all the ones written by Sumner and other people, they're all globe books, but the process requires a flat earth. And that's the difference. It's the process we're arguing about. Not the people who write the books who have all the other stupid beliefs that mean nothing, like you, Proto. Not that. Not silly beliefs by silly people. We don't care what Sumner believes. Or Jacoby. He can believe on anything he wants. It doesn't matter. Because when he's creating those angles. And doing those measurements. He, re he's re he's re he requires a massive horizontal plane. That's the point. So they can believe what they like. And we never said they agree with us. We said the process they're using. Is a complete contradiction. To what they're claiming. Right. That's what we said. Now. I'll come back to that in a second. <clears throat> I'll go through some stuff here. Right. Here are some right now. I just drew this part in, right, to show the circle of equal attitude or the, the coattitude distance, right? Here is a circle of equal attitude, 60 degrees, right? Right. So that'd be your elevation angle. That would leave you with 30 degrees of your zenith. That's a circle. This is from the circle of equal attitude is uh, 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 inscribed about a pole. That is what it is, right? You 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 can't do any of that on a curved surface. None of that happens on a curved surface. So if you have a measurement of 30 degrees as a zenith angle, and you multiply that 30 degrees by by 60, you're going to come up with uh, three, was it 3,600 uh, nautical miles or something like that. Uh, you're going to come up with, 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 with a, lot, a lot of nautical I think it's, it's 1,800, I, I can't remember. Uh, I have to get out the, the calculator. I, I often mix up multiplying things without a calculator. But <clears throat> the point is, is that to do any of this, that measurement is see here from here to here. It's going to be then translated down by in here, and the GP point. It's a horizontal line, right? So this is all the stuff that happen, has. To, this is people. This is someone like an official source who is making this diagram and placing it into the into a book simply because that's what they do in reality. They're not showing the center of a globe or an arc length. They're showing what happens in reality. So this is a so this is what a, so a real circle of equal attitude is, not the nonsense that Proto's showing you. This is the, this is the celestial dome model, right? But this is just a way of depicting uh, um, perspective, in somewhat in, in a somewhat uh, depicting the perspective in a kind of an orthographic view. That's what it is. So you have your azimuth angle and then your altitude angle, right? And if you have another, you'd have your uh, line up here from your, would you be your zenith? And then you'd have your, uh, your what you call it from that, <coughs> your zenith angle to get your zenith, your co-altitude and zenith distance. You know, it is, it is, uh, <coughs> that's what, that, but all they did, all they did was hijack this and say that the, the perspective uh, way of showing perspective that the celestial dome gives you, it, it, they just made that into the surface of their globe. That's all they did. It's totally not. It's so stupid. It's like the stupidest model ever. The globe. It's just really, it's just a really stupid thing. There's no more stupid thing than the globe. It's just really stupid. But that's what they did. They just hijacked the celestial dome model. After, after, they hijacked the longitude lines. Right. Well, it kind of probably happened about the same time. 
But that's all they did. So hijack and let's they hijacked the circle. That's all they did. They, they they just got around a circle and you know took a took a hostage. So here we are again. Right here we are. Look, distance from GP straight line. See that's the GP of the sun. Here is the person that will be the observer. Straight line, distance from the GP circle of position. Completely disproven. Completely disproven. All the rubbish that 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 was uh, the Porter was trying to talk about. So here we are again. Three different circles of different distances. Right. Here we are. Look, there is your angle from the surface. Right. Projected down to the center. Right? That's all it is. Next one. Okay. Right. We're going to go into uh, height of eye now in a moment. <clears throat> so, by subtracting the altitude from 90 and changing the result to nautical miles, we should be able to draw a circle of equal altitude around the GP. So, you're subtracted from 90. Right, that's what you're doing, right? So there's your you take the angle, right? Right, we say your angle of elevation, let's say that's 45, then your zenith will be 45 degrees. That'll be 45 by 60, and uh, turned into nautical miles. That'll be your horizontal. That's what it will be. You know, as is shown uh, in uh, earlier on there. It's going to be a horizontal. Look, that's what it's going to be. Right? It's a horizontal distance from the GP. They're showing it here. There's a boat at this distance, there's your angle, there's the and there's the GP point, there's the horizontal distance. And that is what's going to create your uh, circle of equal attitude. That's what it's going to create it. Look, here we are. That the, that becomes that horizontal becomes the radius of a circle. That's what it is. You know. Sorry, I'm gonna stop that. So here again, GP. Right, line of position, horizontal straight line. Because that's the only way you can do it. You can't do it any other way, other way. It's impossible any other way. So it's gonna come down here. Here we are again. All horizontal has to be horizontal. You can't measure an angle from the center of something. The center about four thousand miles down to the center of the sphere. You're not measuring anything from there. It's complete nonsense. Uh, <clears throat> so once 1.7 more an example. Captain took to a site on the sun on June 21st, 1769 from his nautical almanac. He knew that at the time of the, uh, of the site, the sun was over a point just east of Mazatlan at a, a latitude 23 degrees north, longitude 105 degrees west with his sextant. He measured the altitude of the sun as HO equals 30 degrees above the horizon. What was the radius of the circle of position? Uh, 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 what was uh, right? 30, uh, HO is a thirty degrees above the horizon. What was the radius of the circular position centered on the sun's geographical geographic position, on which his boat was located? Right. So ninety minus thirty equals sixty. His circle of position centered on the sun's GP in Mexico and has a radius of sixty by sixty degrees by one uh, uh, nautical mile, uh, uh, which is three thousand six hundred nautical miles. So his radius is three thousand six hundred. That's a straight line. That's what it is. He's talking about that. He's talking about a flat plane there. That's what he's talking about, right? A flat plane. Now, this is from Proto, about a year ago or more. Now, the original one was actually wrong. He had his uh, trigonometry wrong, as far as I know. But it doesn't matter. See, this is a complete load of nonsense because <clears throat> what Proto was trying to do here is he was saying. How come if he doubles this angle here, right, the 25 to 50, how come it doesn't give him 3,000 nautical miles as a, as a 25 gives him 1,500 nautical miles, right? But what he was really doing, and he wasn't telling anyone, is right, with this first angle here, right, is the only one that matters, right? This is done in the correct way, right? Where he has a 65 degree elevation angle giving him a 25 degree uh, zenith angle, which then multiplied by uh, uh, by 60 we'll give him 1500 nautical miles right so this is he proved here that this process is done on a flat plane and he proved here that there's one two and there's going to be three four in reality right angles he proved it right but then what he tried to do was he tried to make it seem like he had doubled it but really he hadn't because when it came to using this angle he didn't he, he, what he did is he gave the star a, a height of 3,000 miles, something that not, nobody ever does. 
You don't give the stars any height. You don't do any of that. None of that happens. You do what what he did here, and he didn't. He didn't use the fifty degrees zenith angle. What he did is he then done the length of sides and internal angles, and it's all for the right triangle here, which you don't do. You never solve for the right triangle. This is what you do. This process here, which shows you the twenty five. That's what you do. You don't do this other part here. So he did this thing was a complete load of nonsense because he this was a com something nobody ever does. He gave a star a height to a star, all this other rubbish. Whereas this the 25 degree uh, zenith here, this 25 degree zenith angle here, off of a 65 degree elevation angle, that's what you do. You take a elevation angle, then your zenith angle, for, you, you, you subtract that from 90 because you have a 90 here. See, two 90s, he's showing it, right? And that gives you uh, a zenith angle of 25 degrees in this case. Multiplied by 60 gives you 1,500 nautical miles. So that's a horizontal measurement of 1,500 nautical miles along the surface of the water. Right, or the surface of Earth, right? The, at zero, zero degrees elevation. So I'm going to continue on. <clears throat> but I just want to show that that's, that there, that there is from Proto. He tried to... Do a right angle, solve for the right angle triangle with the second one, which completely, for absolutely no reason other than to try and straw man us. A lot of rubbish. Nobody does this second nonsense he did here. If you double this, if you do this and you get, uh, if, if you do this process to get 50, you'd have a 40 degree angle, but you'd, to, to get the distance, you wouldn't do this nonsense where you solve for the right triangle. You wouldn't do, your 40 degree elevation angle would leave you with 50 degree zenith angle and that 50 multiplied by 60 would be your uh would be your 3000 uh, nautical mile um uh, which would be exactly double this it would be 3000 nautical miles but he he just tried to straw man us with the solving of the right triangle nobody solves for the right triangle the only tri we're using two triangles and four right angles that's what you're using two triangles and four right angles and you're not solving for any of them this is what you're doing you're subtracting your zenith for your zenith distance. That's what you're doing. You don't do this other nonsense over here. But anyway, that's what he had to come at us with. <clears throat> here we are, people on the plane here, uh, their angle to the celestial body here. As you can see, they're measuring here. Then you have the people on the water measuring uh, here. And then it's just brought down to the center of their globe. So all the, all the measurements, see, this is a horizontal plane. They need a horizontal plane for the plane as well, for doing the bubble sextant. For the marine sextant, they need a horizontal plane. And then once they've got measurements in the real world, to bring it to the center of the globe and make up a load of stuff. Make shit up. And that's all they do. Right? So that's all that is. <coughs> um, now, <coughs> here is, right, this is, this is a total contradiction because they're showing... Great circle through observer's position and sub, sub point of star. But that comes from the center. So see this curved line here, they have this light curve they have on this other line here. That's from a central point that that line uh, is being measured from. But to get that the angle to go to that central point, they need they need to do take a measurement on the surface, right? So this is 90, and that's 90, this is 90, and that's 90. So you have a box, right? Two zeniths, two verticals, two horizontals. That's what you have in reality. Right? So this is a 90 degree. He's even shown here 90 degrees. Then he's a 60 here, 60 for it. Right? That's a 60 degree elevation angle. So 60 from 90 is 30. They're showing it up here. So you can't have a curved baseline. None of this can be done with a curved baseline. So they had to have a completely horizontal baseline to do this because they needed one, two, three four right angles to do this that's the real process it's a box right it's a box with two right angles that's what it is right two verticals two horizontals two right angles that's what it is that's how the process is done and after you've done all that nonsense or sorry, all that stuff and you've created right see celestial lop is a circle of equal right equal attitude see your zenith distance 1800 nautical miles when you when it shows up here, 30, uh, so one degree is 60 nautical miles on the earth's surface by 30, uh, 60 by, right, so you end up with 1,800 nautical miles then at distance. That's a horizontal distance along the surface of earth. That's what that is. So this is complete, like, uh, like 
it's ridiculous that they put this little curve line in because that curve line is only a mathematical thing that that ha happens afterwards if you bring the angles that you've measured to the center of a globe you a mathematical globe that doesn't exist because they don't have any radius measurement no one ever measured curvature it doesn't exist the thing doesn't exist but you can mathematically make it believe make believe that it does and bring your angles to the center and then measure along an arc right an arc along a, what you're calling a great circle bit. but all this nonsense here this curve line this great circle through observer's position and sub point of star none of that exists that's all mathematical afterwards after you've measured this box with two right angles and 490 degrees right angles and two sorry two two right angle triangles and 490 degree angles right that's what you do <clears throat> here we are again this is from another official source showing exactly that you need the right angle with the height of y uh, or sorry with the with the baseline along the surface of the water and if there's land around it just cut through the land at zero degrees that's what it'll do right here we are here again you have observers i here you have see this little line here that's the water line and all you do you have to bring your, your angle is coming down here so your the height of y brings that down but then they bring whatever angle you you measure from this little section in here to bring that down here to their uh, celestial horizon or celestial equator right that's what they do the celestial horizon is actually based on um that's based on the celestial dome <clears throat> but this here through here is a celestial equator on the globe <clears throat> oh, sorry equatorial equator uh, but it's, that's what they do with it they have to hijack reality and bring it to the center of the globe from official sources all official sources there you go this all on a horizontal plane circle of equal altitude between like two boats they're just showing that that's the, the GP point of the star, and they both, both two boats opposite side of the G, of the zenith have the same angle. Then they will both be on par. They'll both be on the same circle of equal altitude. See the way it's totally horizontal. There, there's no curve in there whatsoever. Here we are again. There's sea level underneath the boat. Right? These are angles. Everything is brought down to sea level. You know, because you need the ninety degrees, which I'm going to show in a minute. <clears throat> so right. Uh, right, this is the first correction made to HR. The next thing we must account for is the fact that the horizon we see is not really 90 degrees from our zenith or from the vertical, unless our eye is right at sea level. At sea level, the horizon is tangent to the sea, <laughs> right? Right, eye is, at, is right at sea level. They have to bring their eye right down to sea level to get the 90. Why does that matter? Right, uh, the higher the eye, the bigger uh, the amount of the dip angle, right? Right, uh, I don't have the illustration there, but right, dip is purely a function of our height of oil. Right, that's your height of oil. That's what the dip is. It's a correction for height of oil. Right, uh, and you have table there for it. So I'm going to go through the height of oil correction now in a minute. <clears throat> but this is what it is. This is from an official source. That right, that uh, the next thing is must do account for the fact that the horizon we see is not really 90 degrees from our zenith. Yeah, because your oil line is above. The water or from the vertical right which would be the vertical your zenith unless our eye is right at sea level at sea level the horizon is tangent to the sea surface and the right angles to the vertical uh, sorry and at right angles to the vertical right exactly but our height of eye gets higher uh, higher the visible uh, but as our height of eye gets higher the visible horizon dips lower and lower the higher our eye the bigger the amount of the dip of this dip right that is height of eye correction, and that's what we're going to know in a minute. <clears throat> right. Uh, sorry. Now. Where are we? Yeah, no. Right. Ah, yeah. Right. Now. Height of eye correction. So as you can see, here is the observer's height of eye. Right, and they always want you. I went through this in another video, but I have to go through it now again. They always want you to believe that there's some kind of a globe horizon down there, right? But this is nonsense because you're correcting the height of void down to sea level to get the 90. This is the 90 you need. So, how can you be having your eye or make it taking an angle between a globe horizon, some kind, whether it's geometric or 
or refracted and a celestial body and expect to get a nighty when you bring your eye line down. You won't. As this shoot would show, you bring your eye line down here and the, the this line is still off down here. So you won't have a 90, so you can't be done. Because your the water underneath your boat that you're bringing your eye line to has to be in a horizontal line with the horizon, and the horizon has to be then in a horizontal line with the GP point. Because you're making a horizontal measurement from the, from the water underneath your boat straight through the horizon and to your GP point. That's what you're doing. So this is total nonsense, I'll show in a minute. Here we are again, the, the same nonsense where you have this, they're trying to make it as if the dip has something to do with this. It, it doesn't. The dip is height of eye correction. You're correcting down to here. Right? That's what you're doing. You're correcting the oil line down to the water. It, it, this doesn't work. How could you have the, your oil line at the water and still have, you're still going to have an obtuse angle from your zenith. It doesn't work. You have to use a surface that's horizontal. That's why they use the seesaw surface. Right? There is no, this nonsense that, that they're showing here. That doesn't exist. That's not underneath the water. It's not there. It never was. It never will be. What exists is everything above this red line. Bloody idiots. Same again, height of eye, you're correct down. But they have, once again, they call this the true horizon and the visible horizon. Nobody observes this. You're not observing it. You're not visi visible, visualizing it. It's not there. You're not doing any of this. You take your eye line down to the water. There's your horizon. There's your horizontal. That's what you do. Sorry. Right. Um, I won't go into that now. That was something I was going to go into, but it takes too long now to go into. Uh, it don't matter. <clears throat> um, so here we are. Right. Right. Is your angle right? Your zenith. This is the observer zenith. This is zenith uh, from the GP point up to the star. Here is your co altitude in a horizontal across the sky, and your zenith distance, which is a horizontal, uh, along the surface of the water. That's what it is. This here, these curved lines, that's just a way of depicting the angle, the arc scale. It's a way of depicting perspective um, as best you can in orthographic view. That's all it is. Height of eye is dip. Yeah, you're going to be taken from your height of eye down to the water. That's what it is. Height of eye is dip. Right? So, right. Right. The height of eye over the surface of the water in feet or meters. The site reduction table is used for a site where the sections assume the height to be at, at ocean level. So as I said, so site reduction tables, not to do with the globe, it's about precision for the angles. Right? Um, and it presumes that the eye is at sea level, right? In, in, the gen, in the general case, and because of the height of the eye above sea level, the angle measured by the sextant HS is a little too high since the actual horizon seen by the observer is a little further away, therefore a little below the rational horizon, which, which is the oil line, I think, uh, at the edge of the horizontal plane. The angle HS measured with uh, it's the sextant therefore needs to be corrected for the dip. Small angle between the horizontal plane, rational horizon, and the actual horizon, right? That's the, what they're talking about there is just basically, besides all the, all the, all the, the buzzwords, it's just the dip, the height of Y. That's what they're talking about, the correction for there. <coughs> Right, so they, they pre-assume right, that the oil line is at the water, they must, so, and it, they must bring it down mathematically to the water line so they can use the horizontal to create the 90, as, they show, uh, as I showed in other, um, as I showed earlier. <coughs> now, dip. The altitude of the sun, which is we measure above the observer's horizon, is always too high, and this dip error always needs to be subtracted, hence the sign in front of the figure 2.6. Uh, this is because the observer is standing on the deck of, of the boat and thus well above the surface of the water, or sorry, of the ocean, when taking a sextant sight. As a result, our observer's horizon is further away and lower than the irrational horizon, which we would use if our eye was just above water. For instance, if we were looking at the horizon from the periscope of a submarine, the higher the observer is above the surface of the ocean, the larger the dip angle. Right. <clears throat> right. Uh, so here we have, I'm going to go into it, right? Right. Uh, the nautical landmark and the site reduction tables assume that the sites are taken at sea level, for instance, from the periscope of a submarine barely emerging above the water. So what they're talking about is basically is give, give an example of you're using sea level. So your oil line is directly it's like imagine yourself being in water where the only things above the water is your eyes. 
take a bit like that, your eyes are directly on the surface of the water. Right, here we have, right, uh, figure 2.8, the height of the observer's eye above sea level determines the dip. This angle must be removed from the altitude of the celestial body above the horizon that is measured with a sextant, H sextant, to obtain the apparent altitude. So all they're talking about there is uh, uh, is the uh, height of eye correction. Right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show something here. Right, make it snappy because this is an, already an hour and ten minutes. So what they want to do, right, if this is the observer here, right, this is the horizon, and this is the GP point of the star, right? So the observer can see out here to the horizon, right? Um, but they have an obtuse angle because there is their zenith, right? And there is the angle, right, to the to the horizon, or sorry, to the GP passing through the horizon. So what they have to do is correct their angle down. Now they can do it. Now we have the rectangle or box, right, depending on the angle. And two right angles, two right angle triangles. So you have two right angle triangles, and uh, two verticals, and two horizontals. That's what you is required to do this process, because you need to bring your eye down to the water, right? This is this blue line here is the water. I'll make it a bit thicker, right? This blue line here is the water. So you want to bring your eye down to the water, so your eye line, right, is mathematically in line with the horizon and then passes through it to be in line with the GP point. That is what you do, right? That's the point of the height and wide correction, the dip correction. That's what it does. You have to be in a horizontal, make a horizontal. Uh, you, the whole point is that, <clears throat> to make it more simple, for anyone who is new to this, the simple thing about all this argument is, is this, right? The reason you're bringing your eye down to water, to the water underneath, the oil line down to the water underneath the boat, it's very simple. It's because you're pre-assuming right, that that water is in a direct horizontal with the horizon, and then you prove it is by your measurements. Right, That's the point. So that means that the water underneath your boat has to be in a horizontal with the horizon and the GP point of the celestial body. That means you're, that's one big, huge, long measurement, uh, horizontal measurement. So if you've got an angle, let's say, of of 60, 60 degrees or something like that, and your zenith distance was 30, then, as we said, our three, like the 1800. Is it 1800? Not a commodity. I don't know what I said earlier. But either way, you'd have, uh, you'd have uh, that's a lot. You'd be talking about 2,000 statute miles of distance, right? Just you do your correction, then you have a 2,000 statute mile horizontal along here. That's what you have. You know that's the point. So you, when you bring when you do height of eye correction, you're doing it to create ninety degrees, four ninety degree angles, one at the one at the zenith of the GP, one between the zenith and the coaltitude, and the other one between the coaltitude and the observer zenith, and this one which is between the uh, uh, observer zenith and uh, the horizontal underneath that you the water underneath your boat. That's the whole point of what you're doing. This is why you do this stuff. So you have correct measurements. So you're correcting down, right? So the oil line is in a horizontal with the horizon and passes through it in a continuing the horizontal to, G, to the GP point. Now, this is why it doesn't work on the globe. This is why everything the proto says and everything that anyone who's on the ball side, say, ball side, side says is rubbish, including, including Harold Jacoby or, uh, or uh, Sumner or anyone else. Right <clears throat> now, and, and you can read their books and they'll talk about needing 90 degrees and how they have to use 90 degrees at the surface. I have a quote there from Harold Jacoby talking about it. So, here is somebody, right? This is supposed to be a globe, right? <clears throat> this would be what the surface of water they need it to be, right? But on the globe, it's not going to be the globe is going to be, it's going to make it blue, right? Right? There's our globe, right? So, but if they do height of white correction here, right? There it is 98. They need a 90, right? Between the zenith of the observer and the waterline. But their waterline is curving. So when they bring that down, they won't have the 90. They'll never have 90. It'll always be wrong. So here you have your correction. You bring it down. It's going to be wrong. Never have 90. It's 97 up there. It'll be 94 there, right? Now, that's 
this is probably it's a, it's a bit exaggerated for just a show, but it doesn't matter. The point is you won't have a ninety. So if you're using uh, what you think is the surface of a globe out, right? Then when you do your height of eye correction, which is this, is the height of eye is a correction from the eye line down to the water underneath the bow. It has nothing to do with where the horizon is or how far away it is, or anything else, nothing to do with it. This is a height of eye correction straight down. Right? There. Now, some of the ballers try and mathematically try and say, oh no, mathematically they're doing this, right? Right? But this is the problem with that. For a start, they're not doing that. As 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 they said earlier, uh, they pre-assume that the oil line is at the surface of the water, right? For a start, they're not doing that. And secondly, the correction is from the height of oil above the water to the water. So that is your dip correction. So if they were trying to correct this up, which they don't do, they correct the oil line down. But people trying to say they correct this up, it would only correct up to here anyway. It wouldn't correct all the way up and then to there. It wouldn't do that. It would just correct to there, right? And you're still out. No matter what way you do it, even if you, even by through their cheating way, right? Which is just the way they try and throw in there in debate, doesn't work. You bring that up. That that that's not the dip correction. That's not height and weight correction. But it's what they try and claim that that, that can be done. But which is they're trying to say this is happening, but it's not. Within their own model. That's what would happen, right? Right now, that's not a height of white correction, but that's what they try and claim it is. It's not a height of white correction. It's not a dip correction, but it doesn't matter because it's still an obtuse angle, still wrong, right? So no matter what way you twist or turn it, none of it works on a globe. This doesn't work on a globe. You don't have your ninety, right? The only way to have the ninety would be if you have a horizontal plane and you correct down. There's your ninety. See. Look, 94, 90. What? Right? 90. Not 90, 90. Not 90, 90. Not 90, 90. That's the only way it can be done. You need, if this is the horizon, you need the water underneath your boat to be the, an exact horizontal with the horizon. That means the water at the horizon and the water at the GP past it has to be exactly in horizontal to each other. Proving that that level is horizontal. Absolute proof that level is horizontal. Because this process can't be done if level is not horizontal. Because it requires a horizontal. And it's using sea level as that horizontal. So level is horizontal. Absolute proof. So that's the end of the video. Hope you understood it. See, not 90, 90. Not 90, 90. Sorry, not 90. 90. That's the only way it works. Okay, and that's the end of the video. Very long video, a lot longer than I wanted it to be. <clears throat> but I had to go through this nonsense because people like Proto are out there. He's not a bad guy. I don't I don't I like Proto. He's okay. He's a good guy. But he's still a bullshitter. <laughs> right? Even if he's only bullshitting himself. Doesn't matter. Uh the point is he's wrong and what he's doing is wrong. And you know, I'm not stupid. Um, whatever tricks he uses, grand. He has to do what he has to do. But uh, <clears throat> right, this one thing here, I could have just shown that and showed nothing else in the whole video, and that would have absolutely debunked him. Just that one thing there would have absolutely ended everything. Everything he showed, over, everything over, finished. But I had to go through all the other stuff to show um, where he was um, <clears throat> bullshitting, basically, <laughs> even if it's only himself, right? As I said, this can't work with a globe's horizon. Can't work with, and especially if it's refracted. Just before I finish, if it's refracted, this is going to be happening. So it'll be going up and down, up and down like this, like a yo-yo. That's the globe's refracted horizon, right? Like a yo-yo. It'll never, you'll never have a ninety. Never works. Okay. Thanks for watching. Very long video. Um. Hope you enjoyed it.